Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our leadership training videos. In these leadership training videos, what I do is I take you through, in a few minutes, some of the leadership skills, the traits, the qualities, the abilities, the insights that you are going to need in order to grow your leadership skills and abilities, or even to get into the leadership space as an entrepreneur, as a young business or mature business, whatever it is, just taking from my own experience and insights. My name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience leading training and developing teams across Europe, Middle East and Africa, but primarily five major European markets. Each time we just take a theme, I break it down, give you my insights, which are my own personal thoughts. Love to hear your thoughts, comments and insights. And of course, like and comment or share or indeed have access to the other videos by subscribing to the channel. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, on the one hand, I've been asked on many occasions where I got into this leadership space and ability and insights. And I have to say, although the name may not be familiar to you, the guy by the name of Leah, I, Lee Iacocca. Now, Lee Iacocca was the first person who really gave me not only insights into, but knowledge of leadership. He was a straight talking, very clear individual, didn't mince his words, obviously roughed up a few thoughts and ideas, but he wrote this amazing book, which I bought back in 1983 or 84, which is Where Have All the Leaders Gone? Which, to be honest, is a very pertinent question for today in this world. Where have all the leaders gone? So he was asking that question. It's an autobiography. And in 1984 and 85, he was actually, uh, that particular book grossed in terms of non-fiction books was the largest selling in the world. And it's no surprise because Lee Iacocca himself, just to give you a brief insight to him, he was A, the son of an immigrant, Italian. He came to the US, grew through not only a scholarship that he got to one of the Ivy League um, major universities, but also the fact that he just had this incredible business acumen and ability both in sales and marketing and was very, very driven. So in the late 40s, he actually joined um, the, the Ford Motor Company. And the Ford Motor Company, of course, had its own challenges at that time, as indeed the, did the automobile industry in general. So he grew through the ranks and in about 1970, he became president of the Ford Motor Company. He grew sales phenomenally. He brought out the Ford Mustang, which at the time was, was just legendary. It was a real experience of a new type of vehicle, which he was very much there to promote and develop. And what was amazing about it as well is that he helped grow the Ford Motor Company into being one of the most successful companies in history and certainly of its time. Profits skyrocketed, especially out of the Mustang, of course. But, and this is the point I wanna make here, Despite the great success of what he had achieved, he actually got fired in 1978. It was a big impact and in his book, he said that it was sort of like being kicked off Mount Everest. He'd reached the top of the pinnacle. He'd achieved so much and yet he was taken out for various different reasons. That had, of course, as all leaders, an impact on his life. However, he rebounded very quickly and in 79, he joined the Chrysler company as president and CEO. And Chrysler was going through a very difficult time. In fact, it was close to bankruptcy. So he came in and really restructured, modified and changed the Chrysler company. And it became equally very successful, very profitable. What did I learn through that? And how did that inspire me? Well, I've taken a few of his quotes, a few of his thoughts, because they have meant a lot to me and I've broken them down for you in this session. So that's what we're going to look at. So Lee Iacocca, maybe a name you haven't heard of, but he was my great inspiration back in the day. Because for him, there were two very important components. One is leadership. You had to have strong leadership, which is clearly what he did when he was at the Ford company or indeed at Chrysler. But he also said that innovation was a very critical part of any progress that you're going to make. So leadership plus innovation is your path to success. Now, we haven't really spent much time in these training programs on innovation specifically, but the question is, is it about evolution or is it revolution? Because if you like, when you look at Lee Iacocca, there was no 
evolution, it wasn't about step by step. On the one hand, he had to grow the Ford Motor Company very quickly. On the, on, on the other, the Chrysler uh, Corporation, which was struggling financially, was gonna go bankrupt. An American icon, both these companies, both these brands were iconic. So it had to be a revolution. And to be honest, very often when you think about innovation, innovation is not about improving in incremental little steps on something, especially if you are in a very competitive environment. It's not about tiptoeing forward, it's about aggressive decisions and choices that you have to make, which may be indeed revolution. So what are the quotes I want to share with you? Well, the first one is this one, and you may have heard me refer to it because there was something very similar with which Steve Jobs of Apple said, which is similar to this, but this was Lee Iacocca's. I hire people brighter than me and get out of their way. I hire people brighter than me and get out of their way. Now, how many of us as leaders decide to hire people who maybe aren't smarter than we are or brighter than we are because we want to keep them in a space where we don't get shown up, but that's totally the wrong approach. If you want to be successful as a leader, remember you are there to grow your business and grow the, the company and so on. You hire people that are brighter than you, get your ego out of the way, has nothing to do with it, and then get out of their way. Let them do what you have hired them in to do. Don't put roadblocks, don't put checks and balances. Make sure that they're given all the opportunity they can have to show you the way forward. So that's one quote that really struck me. The other is this one. In my book, so not the book that he wrote, but in his own world, in his own book, in my book, if you're not number one, you've got to innovate. If you're not number one, you've got to innovate. Again, come back to the Ford story or the Chrysler story. It was about innovation. It was about change. It was about restructuring. It was about changing things that fundamentally were not right or were not helping the company to move forward. So if you want to be number one, which let's face it, if you're in leadership and you want to be number one in terms of the position of your company, your business, your team, then you've got to innovate. You've got to find new ways, new business models, new styles, new approaches, new structures in order to get where you want to be. So in my book, if you're not number one, you've got to innovate. And the final one, which is actually longer than this, but I took just the core elements. We talk a lot, as you know, in these uh, videos about motivation. A leader is there to motivate. You're there to power your team forward, whatever is happening. Come rain, come sleep, come shine, whatever the circumstances. Motivation is everything. We could almost stop there and not do the rest, but he's saying motivation is everything. However, he goes on to say, you can do the work of two people, okay? As a leader, you can do the work of two people, but you can't be two people. What does he mean by that? Well, basically what he's saying is, yes, you can do, you know, maybe 20 hour days or seven day weeks or whatever, which is maybe what two people would be doing. You can do that physically, maybe for, not forever. But the point is that you can't be those two people. And what he was saying here, which is part of the motivation piece, is that the other people that you are required to motivate, so let's say you motivate those who report to you, who then, based on your skill set, knowledge, ability, and fire, motivate others beneath them. And so it goes on. So it's kind of the multiplication factor. You can't motivate everybody. Get those who are motivated, help them to become motivated, and then develop the process so everybody is absolutely energized in that team and that department and that company. And that is how he built the success of what he achieved. And I took those away, like I said, he was, this was my very first major leadership book, and I, I have others, and there were others I bought around that time. But this was the one that really struck me by the intensity of the man. He was so intensive and very successful. And yet, when he retired, he actually fell off the grid, as it were. He retired into anonymity. And yet, 30 years after he had retired, and he died in 2019 at the age of 94, 
in all the major newspapers in the US, whether it's New York Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today and so on, they referred, it was like it was a big, a big deal that Lee Iacocca had died because he was an icon, not only of the American business world and sort of rags to riches kind of idea, but the fact that his business ideas were fundamental and foundational. Now, like in all these things, it's not ironic or not unusual that those foundations are still the same today. We talk about leadership, we talk about innovation. 50, 60, 80 years ago, the same thing with Lee Iacocca. Today, they are just as important. So those are some of the things that I learned. I hope that you can use some of those quotes and thoughts and see how you can position yourself to grow your own team and yourself. So I hope this has resonated with you. If it has, please feel free to like, comment and share. And of course, subscribe to the channel and come back for more and we can share more time together in the other videos that I will share with you. So in the meantime, thank you.